There's a whole lot more craziness going on today, and if you'll stay tuned, I'll tell you all about it. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. It is Wednesday, August 31st. You can kiss that one goodbye. <laughs> August is history now. Well, we got a little bit left today, but that's it. Yeah, as I mentioned, it's craziness and then craziness, and then on top of that, there's some craziness. The first bit of craziness is I need to get this vlog out and finish this morning early because at 10 o'clock I'll be sitting in the doctor's office. I decided to go ahead and go to the heart doctor just to rule it out. One of my best friends is Jim Spadaro. He is a heart surgeon and he's retired. He just retired last year. He uh, encouraged me uh, to go see one of his doctor friends today because he felt like the episode I had on Friday could easily be heart related. So I'm going to take my good buddy Jim's advice and go see one of his friends this morning at 10 a.m. Hopefully they can do some sort of a non-invasive stress test or EKG or something like that that uh, they can get some indication. I'm not really ready for like a catheter type test or anything, at least I hope not. And I hope that we can rule that out because I really, well, at least I want to believe that it's a tick-related issue. But we'll know that hopefully uh, tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, that's craziness number one. Craziness number two is, you know, I was all happy that I had found the problem with the Bobcat. And I still have. I mean, it's working very well. And I didn't know that there's another problem until I went to change the implements. You know, I did everything with the bucket, you know, working on the pond. So I didn't need to change and put anything else on the front of the Bobcat. Well, now I need to put the backhoe on there, which is yet another story that I'll tell you about. When I went to uh, take the bucket off, it wouldn't let me. This Bobcat has the button you push that opens up the arms and lets, it's the uh, automatic, what they call Bobtack, quick attach thing, and it's automatic. And it works great when it works. It's th This is the first time that's ever been a problem. Well, I figure it's probably something simple. I figured it's probably some kind of an electrical issue. So I pull out the headliner because the button's up there at the top and I pull out the headliner and I start looking at wires and sure enough I found three wires that were broke in half or rubbed in half basically is what it looked like. I also found some mice damage on some wires but it, it wasn't real severe so that wasn't probably the issue. I cleaned that area up, taped it off, and you know, left it left it alone basically in that area. But the three that were broken in half, of course, I fixed them with a splice and uh, taped it all up real good. That didn't fix the problem though. Now that might have something to do with those other error messages that I was getting. It it's possible, but I don't know that yet because uh, I haven't got past square one. I still can't get the arms to raise up so I can change the implements. <laughs> It's always something. So I won't be able to work on that, of course, until I get an okay from the doctor. That's still just the very tip top of the iceberg. The uh, wife bought a uh, large truck from her brother a couple years back. It's a Dodge Ram 3500, uh, you know, one ton, 6.7 Cummings diesel. Well, all of those trucks have a problem with the actuator, turbo actuator, I should say. And it, it's a very common problem. So therefore, people know how to fix that, right? Well, around here, you might think differently because every place we take it, it's some kind of a problem with them. And it's a crazy expensive, anywhere from three to $5,000 to fix it. The part alone, if you buy the uh, factory part, is uh, roughly $2,000. Well, I did a little bit of research online and found that you can buy a uh, aftermarket part, according to everyone that's put it on, says it's actually better. They said it's actually stronger, it works better, the truck performs better, you know, everything about it seems to be better. It only costs $900, and the very best thing about it is that you can do it yourself because it is self-calibrating. 
So that's probably the route I'm going to go because I'm going to do it myself and save the extra $3,000 or so. You know, I'll pay $900 for the part, put it on myself. I think I can put it on in about two hours. That's what it looks like based on the videos I've watched and see how people have been doing it. I mean, it might take a little more than two hours, but even if it takes me a whole day, it's probably worth it compared to spending an extra $3,000. Plus, I'll know that it was done the way it should be done. So that's tip of iceberg number two. Of course, tip of iceberg number three is, as you know, I've been working on that pond and I need to get a pipe in there uh, and probably need to get it in there today or tomorrow for sure. And of course, back to the bobcat, I can't do that because I can't put the backhoe on to dig the little trench, you know, and it's just, you know, and the other story I was going to tell you, which is a very sad story uh, about needing to put the backhoe on the bobcat, is the real reason I need to put the backhoe on the bobcat is I need to dig a rather large hole. Which on the farm, uh, if you're a farmer and have animals, you kind of probably already know where this is headed. That is that we've got a pony. He, it's pretty old and it's really on its last leg. It's almost a pun because that's part of the problems it's having is walking. Uh, the the uh, pony has foundered in its, you know, in years past. Foundered means basically they eat so much that they're feet grow out weird or something. It's it's some weird disease that horses get. I don't even really fully understand it, even though I've heard about it my whole life. But anyway, this pony has that problem, and it's just old and can barely get around, and we need to have the vet put her down uh, because we believe she's suffering. And the problem is I can't dig the hole because I don't have the bobcat, so we're not having the vet out yet until I can get that done. So that's tip of iceberg number three or four there. Oh my gosh, and it just goes on. And you know, and then if I got through of, of with all of the stuff that's piled up that I need to fix, then there's, you know, there's at least a two or three dozen projects that I'd just like to do because I'd like to do them. You know, one of the projects I've always wanted to do here, our pond right here by the entrance of our farm is spring fed also. And I've always wanted to put a water wheel there because the spring comes from up above and falls down into the pond. And I could put a water wheel there and make that look really beautiful. But I just can't get to those fun projects. <laughs> Not to mention you can see the guitar hanging there that I haven't been able to do anything with because I didn't get to look at the guitar yesterday because I was concentrating on the bobcat because I've got to get that those arms fixed. And I know somebody's going to say, buy this brand, you don't have that those problems, or buy a new Bobcat. Well, fine, if you all want to take up a collection and, and give me about $65,000, uh, we'll go out and buy one, you know, no problem. But this boy ain't got that kind of money. As I've always said, it's just not easy being me. But I uh, really thought I'd wear this shirt to the doctor in honor of the doctor. I was better, but I'm getting over it. <laughs> Hopefully the doctor has a sense of humor. Uh, he's squeezing me in, so I have a feeling I'll be sitting in the office there for no tellings how many hours trying to get in to see him. I probably should have just wore the one that says it's not easy being me. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to me this morning, and uh, hopefully I'll have uh, better news tomorrow. We'll see you then. <laughs>